Starfield has been released today, although the buyers of the premium version of the game have managed to put their hands on their game some days earlier, leading to benchmarks already being online, like the ones presented by Hardware and Box, where they test several GPUs and CPUs in this particular title. And as I showed in my RX 7900 XTX video, or as you can see in the Hardware and Box CPU benchmark video, this game heavily relies on the CPU to deliver anything past 70 FPS, with even decent CPUs such as the Ryzen 5 5600X delivering a very bad performance. And strangely, this has nothing to do with core count, as according to Hardware and Box, even the Ryzen 9 5900X featuring 12 cores and 24 threads performs considerably worse than the lower tier Ryzen 5 7500 that sells under $200 and only has 6 cores and 12 threads. Half of what the 5900X has. Meaning that once again the CPU, IPC, clock frequency, cache and latencies are very important for this title. And when I think about CPU performance, I automatically think of RAM performance as well, because depending on the title, having a better RAM configuration can actually help the CPU push those extra frames. And if Starfield is so CPU intensive, Will the RAM configurations actually affect the performance by the same degree? And just because I actually forgot the sponsor part, you're watching it now. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And for this, we'll start with some 1080p benchmarks with my Ryzen 7 7700X and the RX 7900XTX. And yes, yes, I know I that nobody's in their right minds gonna use this kind of build, this kind of high-end build to play at 1080p high settings. I do know that entirely, but I actually need to use these settings, these lower resolution in order to mitigate any kind of GPU bottleneck to actually show the true potential of different RAM frequencies. And that's because this kind of test can only be decently done if you're not running into a GPU bottleneck and if you're running into a CPU slash RAM bottleneck, at least if you want to see the maximum FPS or the maximum FPS difference in between each frequency and each latency. And in this scenario, the numbers that you see at 1080p will be exactly the numbers that you'll see at 1440p because once again, we're CPU slash RAM bottlenecked. So don't worry. The first tests are using high settings and running around Aquila and going from the slowest to the fastest RAM configuration, we get a 22% performance increase, with the game and CPU caring mostly about the memory sub-timings, as even with no frequency change whatsoever, they increase the FPS numbers by 6.5, translating into an 8% performance increase with a 12% performance increase in the 1% lows, which is actually pretty good. Going to Gergarin or something like that, the performance scales are more or less the same, with the fastest RAM configuration being 20% faster than the slowest one, with the sub-timings alone delivering a very decent performance increase, mostly in the 1% lows, where we went from 71 to 78.1 FPS, translating into a 10% increase. And this scenario isn't as heavy as Aquila due to having less NPCs, maybe, I guess, as the CPU is able to deliver a bit more FPS. As we go into New Atlantis, things get a bit heavier once again, now with 23% advantage of the fastest RAM configuration over the slowest one, and with the subtimings alone going for 7.6% of those 23%, with another 10% increase in the 1% lows, of course. And what you see here basically means that if you're running into a CPU bottleneck scenario in this game, getting a better RAM kit or tweaking the current one you have may actually deliver over 10 FPS increase, and when running at lower frame rates such as 60, 70 or even 80, those 10 or 15 extra frames will definitely make the gameplay a lot smoother. But well, even with my previous explanation, I know that there would still be people telling me things like Well, but nobody uses that, nobody uses that configuration and blah 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 Most people using lower end GPUs would see absolutely no difference And exactly for those, I decided to also test the Ryzen 5 5600X with an RTX 4060, which is an entry-level GPU 
In here, we're using 1080p medium settings with the LSS 3.5 mod running at 66% resolution scale, which is basically the quality settings that we usually use. And by the way, the LSS 3.5 looks much better than FSR 2.2. But well, as you see, a low tier RTX 4060 card that should be a complete GPU bottleneck for the Ryzen 5 5600X still manages to get better FPS values as soon as we improve the memory sub-timings, meaning that even in this situation, the CPU and RAM are still having a slight bottleneck, with the better RAM configuration still delivering around 4 FPS over the worst ones, which is definitely not much, but I just wanted to prove you that even with lower tier configurations, the RAM does help. In Gagarin, as seen before, the CPU bottleneck is quite less, so the RTX 4060 is able to deliver 65 average FPS with no restraints from our Ryzen 5 5600X, apart from the slightly lower 1% lows in the most common kit like the 3200MHz CL16. Although, as we go into Atlantis, we have a higher CPU load once again due to the bigger number of assets and NPCs, thing that's shown in the results, where the best RAM configuration has around 3 average FPS over the worst one, while also delivering better 1% lows, showing once again that even in situations where most believe their performance handicap is due to the GPU, it's actually the opposite, with the real culprits being the CPU and RAM. And of course, the really poor game optimization. That's basically it. That's what I wanted to show you in this video, that RAM is still very important for, star for Starfield players, so if you're actually running a, a really bad RAM kit, if you're having performance hikes, if the performance isn't reaching the levels that it was supposed to, for example, if you see some of my videos and your performance is quite low, it is definitely due to the RAM configuration that you have, that is most likely, uh, well, way worse than mine. For example, I saw, I saw one one person actually telling me that they that they have the exact same configuration with the 7700X um, and the 7900X TX, and they told me that they were having, let's say, 10 FPS less than I was, in some scenarios even more. And that was exactly due to the RAM configuration, because that person had a 5600MHz CL36 or something like that. So that person was actually having less FPS due to their RAM configuration, because their RAM configuration was way slower and it wasn't helping the CPU as much, leading to an overall lower FPS number. And even when we tested the RTX 4060, uh, I even pushed um, the higher frame rates, I pushed the LSS 3.5 mod, I pushed 1080p medium, which is already a bit high for the 4060, because the 4060 doesn't perform that, that well, so, and even in that scenario, we still had around, let's say, 5, five FPS increase from 3 to 5 FPS increase. Um, and going, for, for example, from 55 to 60 FPS, well, it makes a difference in, in terms of gameplay smoothness. And if you're going, let's say, from 45 to 50, it makes an even higher, an even bigger difference in terms of gameplay smoothness. We're talking about 5 Hz and we're talking about, let's say, 10% in terms of Hz. So it makes a lot of difference in those scenarios. Even going, like I told you, from, si from 55 to 60, if you are trained, if you are used to play at higher refresh rates, you can notice the difference. With a 6800, let's say, or even with higher tier cards, let's say, for example, the 4080, the 4080 performs quite worse than the, the, than the 7900 XTX on this particular game. Um, and since the, the Nvidia cards have way bigger CPU overhead, they generally tend to perform worse in CPU bound scenarios. And this game is extremely CPU bound, meaning that if you're running this exact configuration or these exact tests, but let's say with a 4080 that I don't have to test here, I don't have one to test, to test, sorry, otherwise I would include it in the, in the video as well. If you have a 4080 uh, instead of the, the XTX, you'll most likely have an even bigger difference in terms of, of RAM frequency. So once again, if you're having lower than expected performance, look at your RAM kit and embrace it, really embrace it. If you think that you need to, to get a better RAM kit, just do it. If, you're, if you think that you can actually tweak your RAM kit for better performance, do it as well, as you'll get more FPS for free. It's a win-win situation. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share this video, as it really helps a lot. And yeah, follow me on Twitter, blah, 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 blah. And leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the, the performance increases. And if you had a similar experience in other games, and if you, you'll actually try to tweak your GPU in order to get more FPS in Starfield. I really want to know. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.